Greetings my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by GlassesUSA.com where you can find over 6,000 different styles of prescription frames and sunnies in in-house brands and name brands. So many different cute styles to choose from at great prices as well. GlassesUSA.com offers glasses up to 70% off retail because they cut out the middle person and they make it so easy and convenient to try on glasses like I did using the virtual mirror tool allows you to try on glasses to see how they look on your face. Glasses USA sent me a bunch of glasses, so I'd love to hear what you think about them. How about this pair? I got a pair of sunnies as well. And a couple of kind of throwback wireframe glasses. I used to have a pair like this in middle school. What do you think? Can I still rock it? Uh, how about these? <laughs> So a complete pair of glasses, including prescription lenses, starts at $30, and all frames include a basic prescription lens. Shopping at GlassesUSA.com is a risk-free experience. If for any reason you're not happy with your glasses, you can return them within the first 14 days of receiving them. Free shipping, free returns, and a 100% money-back guarantee. So if you'd like to try GlassesUSA.com yourself, click the link down below for a special offer. Big thanks to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring this video and for their continued support. So today I'm going to be attempting a recipe that I've been seeing a lot of all over the place and it is for bubble potatoes, bubble potato crisps, bubble potato chips, and they look visually very compelling. They look puffed up potato crisps that when you squish them, they just kind of shatter because they're so crispy. They're like potato chips, but inflated look absolutely stunning and when i was doing a little bit of research i found out and remembered that this is a take on pomme souffle a french recipe and technique of cooking thinly sliced potatoes until they self-inflate in fact i remember watching an episode of jacques and julia where jacques demonstrates how to do this and it looks absolutely magical now the technique Jacques uses is cutting the potato about three or four millimeters thick and then frying it twice in oil first to cook the potato and then in hotter oil which causes steam to be created inside the potato slice. The two deep fried halves separate and inflate. And this technique, as you can imagine, is quite finicky because you have to have two pots of oil at two different temperatures with two different burners and requires a lot of practice. Now, according to Chef Radiova, which I'll put a link down below to her video when she explains pomme souffle, she says this technique works better. And this is the technique that I've seen in Nino's home and table diary. I'll put links down below to all of their videos. And that is to take two layers of potato, which are cut a bit thinner than the first technique. And then you stick them together with a bit of egg white and cornstarch. So let's go ahead and attempt the bubble potato. <laughs> now this recipe is super simple. It's all about technique. You are going to need a tool and this is a mandolin and this is a slicer with a very sharp blade and it allows you on the back here to adjust the thickness of whatever you are slicing. Notoriously dangerous and it includes a guard for that reason right here. And we're going to set this on the thinnest possible setting. I'm using Yukon Gold potatoes because that's what I happen to have, but I've seen this done with russet potatoes as well. So this is actually pretty thin. It is quite thin, like almost transparent. Try to get even slices. Okay, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Uh, so when I did the 15 hour potatoes where I did a stack of potatoes and <laughs> it took 15 hours to create the entire dish, I think I cut the potatoes a little too thick in that recipe and many of you told me so. So thank you for helping me out. Now we're going to take some paper towel and dry our slices off. That will help with the crispness. And then we're going to press. Okay, we also need one egg white, so separate an egg. This is how I like to do it with my impeccably clean hand. Just pull it out. I've used a lot of gadgets 
to separate yolks from egg whites. And in the end, this is just what I end up doing because I don't often have the gadget handy or for whatever reason. And there's something about scooping that perfect yolk. So cute, look at that. Now, I've got a sifter here with some cornstarch and we're gonna lightly dust half of these. Brush the excess cornstarch off. So let me put this on my cutting board so you can see it better. Now to the other half, we're going to apply a good amount of egg white. Glue that together. And then we're going to match it with its mate. Bloop. Give it a good press. So there we have it. Two thin slices of potato that we've glued together with cornstarch and egg white. So at this point, we can cut this into any shape we like. I've seen squares, I've seen rectangles, circles, ovals, whatever you like. I think I'm gonna test out both circles and squares. So I've got a cookie cutter here. I'm gonna stack these two on top of each other. I can get four out of each of these. So since I stacked it, so turn it. So I'm gonna set these onto my baking tray here so they'll be ready to fry. And I'm gonna continue doing this. I'm also gonna make some square or rectangular ones as well. Just cut this one into a square. Oh. It'll be fine. If it's not, it's fine too. <laughs> I'm gonna continue doing this and when I come back, we will fry these up. All right, my lovelies, I'm back. Here's my tray of potatoes. I've got round ones, rectangular ones, rhombus and square. I am heating about an inch of peanut oil to 300 degrees. I'm just gonna fry these pretty much one at a time because we don't want the oil temperature to drop too much. I'm gonna slip a potato in there and starting to fry up. It is sticking to the bottom though. I didn't see others sticking to the bottom, so I'm gonna give it a shunch so it doesn't, yeah, there we go. And I'm gonna let it fry and it is beginning to puff. These might need two fryings. In Nino's home, when they did their bubble potatoes, they fried them twice, just to a preliminary kind of light golden and then again for the kind of finish golden. And after the first cooking, they deflated. So this one's not inflating all that much. I'm gonna reduce the temperature. I've got my oil now at 355. Not impressed with that one, as my mom would say. Chef Radonova said that 350 was the temperature at which to fry these at. But other videos said 300, so. Oh, but it's sticking to my thing again. Oh, this one's inflating a bit better. So I'm just gonna keep tossing oil on it. This one popped a little bit better, but not all plump and round. Hmm, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed I wanted that immediate puff action. So I'm going to really press these two halves together. Place it in and let it fry initially so hopefully it won't sink to the bottom. Yeah. Okay, that helped. Okay, this is the most promising one so far. Okay, I got one. I got one to bubble up. So I think you have to really press the two halves together to make sure there's a good seal and there's no air bubble inside. Yes. Ooh, that one puffed. Yay, it puffed. Ah! That's how it's supposed to look. All right, give it a flipsy flipsy. If I get one bubble, I'm happy. Cute. Alrighty, so I have par fried all of my potato pieces and I would say about 50% of them inflated. Now I'm heating my oil to 175 and we are going to refry these. For the ones that inflated, they should reinflate. And to get them nice and poofy. Here's my one 
rectangular pillow. Alrighty, my lovelies, I am back with my completed bubble potatoes. I have to say I'm a bit disappointed. About a third of my potatoes successfully puffed and the rest are kind of flat or partially inflated. This is the first time I've attempted this recipe. I feel like I should mention that I am a home cook. I'm not professionally trained. And when I test these recipes, I'm testing them from the perspective of a home cook. Will that recipe really work? Well, it does work, but it's a finicky recipe to be sure. Now I'm going to sprinkle a bit of salt on these. I should have done that right when they came out of the fryer, but you know, <laughs> you know. These little ones right here puffed up. I did get a couple of rectangular ones that puffed. Very happy about that. I did the rhombus one, looks more like a chip as do some of these other ones. But, but these other ones right here looked beautiful. So stinking cute, look at that. Alrighty, let's give the bubble potato a taste. Here we go, itadakimasu. Very, very crispy. Like a potato chip. Great potato flavor, salt, it's nice really simply adorn, very nutty toasted flavor, and great crisp. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Hollow, gorgeous, completely separated. Yes! Mmm, it was so crispy. Let's try one that was not successful. See how crispy that one is. Mm-mm. I like the flavor of that one. It's not as toasted. A better potato flavor in my opinion. But you don't have that big crunch. Let's try this one. This is a very flat one too. Mm. I made some very finicky potato chips is what I made. <laughs> if you want to make potato chips and you've got some extra time and you want to see some inflation happen, then this recipe is for you. If you just want a nice little potato -y snack and you want to watch the inflation on video, that's a good choice too, in my opinion. So crispy. All right, my lovelies, thanks so much for joining me and big thanks to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to receive a special offer on glasses, please click the link down below. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, check out my website for a printable version of this recipe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toulou, take care, bye! I can't see you.